record. Hey, hey, Jolly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We're continuing the investigation of Case 5, and it's pretty long so far. I don't think we've had an investigation as long as this one yet. So let's go. Now we actually get to examine this place because we got the thing signed from Jin Gina saying that she wants us to be her defense attorney. So here we are again at the scene of the crime. Now to thrust these representation papers in Gregson's face and see what he makes of them. Oh, whoops, I was supposed to look at this screen. Ah, I forgot. Hello again, Inspector. Do you have a minute, please? What is it now? You should go home and get some rest. Here you are, Gregson. Here are the representation papers. Your ladyship! Ho ho! I don't believe it! How the devil did you get that stubborn little rag bash to sign that? I salute you! That is good work, that is! I can see you've been very busy here as well. How about some tea? It's a special blend designed to relieve fatigue. Oh man, this makes me- tea think, makes me think of Professor Layton, because there was that one game where different characters liked different tea blends. Oh, lovely. Well, let's see now. Yes, yes, I hardly feel tired at all. I'm as fit as a fiddle, your ladyship. Would it be alright if we investigated the seat of the crime then? Do as you please. You know where it happened? Through that door behind the counter. Yes, the storeroom. That's where I discovered Mr. Windbank and Gina. Right, well, I'll be getting back to business then. Will you be investigating in the storm as well, Inspector? If I'm perfectly honest, we need to wrap this up before long. Can't afford to spend too much time on it. But there are so many articles to go through, it's taking forever, even with the lads working around the clock. Which is a problem, because there's another case the Yard needs to investigate urgently. That must be what Lord Strongheart meant by far more serious matters before. So what I'm saying is, don't get under my feet, Sunshine. I'm hoping that this case and the other case that they're investigating does not, like, coincide with each other, so that we go through this case and then they're like, but wait, there's more, and then there's more we have to investigate. It's just like, no, we were keeping up a good pace and, like, let's just, let's just finish the game. <laughs> I want to move on to part two. Come then, let us not waste any time. But should I still examine stuff in this section first? Like, there's this calendar. Ah, look here! A bullet? Or, right? Oh yes, a bullet hole, and I can see that the bullet is still lodged in the wall. Presumably Mr. Windebank wasn't practicing with his revolver in his spare time. So whose blood splatter is that, or is that paint? Ah, well... Mr. Scholes is like, likes to practice his drawing room. Wait. Mr. Scholes likes to practice in his drawing room whenever he can. He's very patriotic like that. What does shooting a gun have to do with patriotism? Sorry? It's all there in the adventures of Herlock Scholes, you know? Isn't that right, Iris? Ah, oh, did I write something like that? Partly in jest, perhaps. In jest? Well, he doesn't do it often. It's quite dangerous pastime. He doesn't do it often. He shouldn't even do it once. Forget that for now, Rudy. Let's examine this bullet. What's that around the bullet hole? Is it blood? Hmm, a suspicious red stain on the calendar. Aha! Uh -huh. I may well be able I may well be able to help with that. I can't read. It's just because like the colors of the letters are too so light against their light clothing. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> what? There's nothing like the sight of blood to get the blood pumping, is there, Rudo? Ugh, I have a feeling I'm not as bloody-minded as you, Iris. I'm afraid the sight of blood makes my blood run cold. There you have it, you see? When it comes to blood, we're all different types. Yes, what a scientific observation. 
So you need this. Oh no, what is that scary looking thing? Hmm, Hurley and I haven't actually come up with a name for it yet. But as soon as you see it in action, you'll understand what it does. Watch! Is it going to react like Luminol? Oh! Kirby! Thank you for the 22 months sub! Oh my gosh, those are amazing and I love those wiggles. That's a cat, a Bidoof, and a Wobbuffet. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. Wait, can we have animated emotes now? Shoot. <laughs> Hi, Kratos. Hello, Kirby. Happy Tuesday. The color of the bloodstain has changed. Like this? Yeah, like, is that a thing that we could just normally do? Or is that a perk of being a, a sub for someone? Because if we can make animated emotes, I think I want to change mine up. <laughs> it's been too long since I changed mine. There, does it make sense now? Yes, I think I'm starting to understand. Good. It works on the principle that different people have different types of blood, you see? Yes, how wonderful. The chemical it fires combines with the blood and makes it change color. So you can identify whose blood it is that you're looking at. In a flash. Wait, but what? But there's four... What? Not everyone... What? Because, like, there's four blood types. A, B, A, B, and O. But that doesn't mean everyone's blood is individual. What? Oh, what a fabulous invention, Iris. Isn't it? Isn't it? I bet Ginny would say it's bleeding great. So whose blood are we looking at, then? Well, all the chemical does is turn the blood a different color, so... Just find someone whose blood turns the same color and you'll know who it belongs to. In a flash. It's more like two flashes, really, isn't it? One flash or two. This could well turn out to be a very valuable clue. So you must make note of it in the court record. The blood sample has been... Entered into court record. Sample blood analyzed a special chemical indicator developed by Mr. Sholmes. Different people's blood turns different colors. Let's keep testing and adding the results of any other blood analysis to the portfolio. As long as I have reagent left, sure. And then we're gonna run out at a crucial moment. And it's gonna suck. Fluffy toast. Yeah, I just took a shower. I'm so wiped out from exercising and working out. Like, I think I messed up my knee by squatting too much. One day, uh, I just did way too many squats and it killed me. Uh, and then I, today I did too many squats too, so it hurts. I'm fairly sure this contraption was here yesterday as well. Here we are, although I'm not confident I could get it closed again. Oh, yes. That's a folding stereoscope. Really? This is a stereoscope? Mr. Scholl showed us a picture yesterday that you were supposed to be able to see in three dimensions. But for that, he used the great big contraption over there. Ah, oh, well, that's for use in the public houses and places like that. It contains a carousel with all sorts of pictures inside. Oh, Kirby, did you finish case five? Are you done with um, Great Ace Attorney 1? Are you on to number two? But this little thing is much simpler design for use at home. There are special shops selling prints you can use in them. I have another collection myself. Started the trial, so I'm just ahead of you. Oh, damn, I might catch up to you, Kirby. Been doing too much? That's understandable. I wonder if I can make money out of these in Japan. It would be keeping my toilet. It would. Wait, what? Be keeping my toilet sparkling clean anyway? What does that. What does keeping your toilet clean have to do with. Stereos? I don't understand. I like. Like watching the stream. <laughs> no, you should play your game while I'm playing so that you can give me hints if I'm ever super stuck on something. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so the stereoscope do nothing. Can we examine this again? This is that strange contraption that lets you see pictures of things as if they're right in front of your eyes. It makes you think when Mr. Sholmes gleefully showed it to us yesterday, we were blissfully unaware that any of this was about to happen. Okay, useless. Um, let's examine this. 
That's a music box. Do you have any? Do you have them where you come from, Runa? Yes, but I've never seen one as large as this in Japan. Oh well, this will be a treat. Shall we have a listen? This song is so nice. This is a huge disc with a lot of keys, because there's so many notes and they're going like very rapidly. Dang. What do you think? Isn't it a pretty sound? It's a beautiful sound, yes, but... It's a little hard to enjoy when all the policemen in the room are giving you fierce looks. Never mind that. If any of them say anything, I'll tell Brexit to have a word. Iris Wilson, Superintendent of Scotland Yard. <laughs> Da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba. Now can we examine this glass? Thank you. There's the article ledger here and Mr. Windbank's notes and... Hmm? What's this? It looks as though someone has left a little photographic print behind. Oh, look on the back. There's some writing. Is that? Ooh, show us, Susie. Show us. 15th February, 10.30 p.m. Articles posited one gentleman's overcoat. Loan amount paid one pound. Redemption deadline, 15th April, 10.30 p.m. A gentleman's overcoat pawned for a pound. Clearly it was a very fine coat. In fact, I think... Yes, this must be the ticket for the overcoat that Ginny redeemed yesterday. And is still wearing, which belonged to McGilded. I would never have expected the redemption ticket to be handwritten on the back of a photograph, though. Look at this photograph! It seems Mr. Windbank just used whatever piece of paper he happened to have on hand. That's the... Isn't that the cat we saw? No, but that is the snowman we saw by, um... by the army dude's house. With this photographic of a cat. It looks very familiar, doesn't it? I'm sure I've seen this exact same picture somewhere else recently. Oh, yes, you're right. Very recently. It's the same as the one Ginny gave us earlier. Of course. I was forgetting that she gave us that print. No need to get catty about the photos. <laughs> hey, Grod, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Hope you've been well, dude. Well, what are you waiting for then, Mr. Naruhoro? Get it out. All right, all right, let the cogs turn. Yay, <laughs> kitty. Oh, it's slightly different. The cat. Oh, and then you stereoscope it thing, and then we should be able to see something. Yes, they're exactly the same. Not quite, Susato. <laughs> I've got it. These two photographs hide an amazing secret. A secret? What does she mean? You must tell us, Iris, at once. Oh, I get what they're trying to do with the stereoscopic thing. Because this game originally came out for 3DS. So I'm guessing once you turn the 3D on in the game, then it would have made like a complete picture. That's clever. But now we have to cr like cross our eyes. Oh, damn. That's really interesting. <laughs> Do you really, really, really want to know? Yes, we need you to tell us all you know about this pair of photographs. Are we gonna talk to her or... Can I examine these shovels? Or do I have to talk to Iris first? The ledger that's open on account there really is enormous, isn't it? It must be an awful lot of work to keep track of all these hundreds of items to pawn. It's too much to think about. Better to sell it all and have a clear head if you ask me. But clearly Mr. Windbag was very careful when it came to the articles in his care. Okay, so I do have to talk to Iris. Never mind. Converse. Pair of photographs. Look at these photographs! Okay, I'll stop. Uh, so Iris, about these two photographic prints. The one we found here on Mr. Windbag's counter and the one Gina gave us before. What is this amazing secret you mentioned that's hidden between these two identical prints? Ach, 
Actually, that's not quite right. Sorry? If you look carefully, the two prints aren't the same. Not exactly. They're not? Uh, have another look at them now. Can you see that they're just slightly different from each other? I think so. It's very subtle though. But what's the reason for the subtle difference between the two prints? Ah, well, it's because they're set, you see? No, I don't. We were just looking at the stereoscope, do you- uh, This pair of photographs? It's meant to be used in a stereoscope. Everyone in London is raving about them at the moment. Ah, a stereoscope. Why do I feel as though I've heard that word before recently? Oh, yes, that's what Mr. Scholl showed us yesterday. You see? There it is, just over there. Ah, yes, of course. A magical machine that makes pictures look almost real enough to touch. Hehehe. <laughs> well, actually... It's quite possible to see the same depth in pictures even without one of those contraptions. What? Really? Do you know how a pair of flat photographic prints can appear to have depth in the first place? No, I have no idea. Oh, wonderful! Then I'll be able to tell you. She's over the moon, bless her. Should we let her explain, though? We really need to carry on investigating the scene. I, for one, simply have to know. Great, so we do have to listen to it. Ah, oh, but we just... we went over this. Have you ever considered, Rudo? How will I see depth in the world around us? <laughs> what are those petting evils? That is so freaking cute! Holy crap! It's kind of creepy though because the hands like constantly go on like that. But like all the kitties' hands are getting smushed, that's so cute! Well, I just open them and it works. <laughs> but the reason it works is because we have two eyes. Two eyes? Shocking. If you try closing just one eye at a time, I think you'll see straight away. What you see with your left eye? I want you to see with your right eye. True, my camera. The middle of my camera moves. Left eye middle, right eye middle. Uh huh. Uh, if it's so slightly different, you get a different view with each eye. Yes, the position of objects seems to shift slightly. Exactly. And in your head, your brain uses that shift to estimate depth as it merges the two views into one. That's how we can sense depth in everything we see. Ha, huh, my brain really is amazing, isn't it? It does so much without telling me. Ah, I think I see. So the pair of photographs consists of a left eye view and a right eye view. Is that right? Why so much flashing? Why? Oh, well done, Susie. You're so quick. So if you can persuade your brain to merge the two pictures together in your head, you'd be able to see depth in these prints. This is gonna come up later in the trial, I think, because why would we go so in-depth about talking about this? Yes, Rudem, you're beginning to understand. And the stereoscope's function is to act as your brain and allow you to do just that. Yes, but... As long as you have two images, two eyes, and one brain, you can actually do it yourself without needing a stereoscope at all. You can? Really? How to view stereoscopic prints. Let's try it. Let's see if you can view this pair of prints without the help of a stereoscope. Oh yes, I'm trying to have a go. susan san really loves this kind of thing. You need to be able to cross your eyes. That's the main thing. Can you both do that? Cross my eyes? I think I can. You need to turn on the 3D slider on your 3DS. <laughs> Watch me and see if you can copy. That's cute though. Make your eyes do this. Alright, let me try. Are you ready, Mr. Naruhodo? They're so silly. There, how's that? 
Wonderful. Now it's your turn, Bruno. The trick is to concentrate on looking at the bridge of your nose with both eyes at the same time. Not exactly an easy task when you have two people when two people are staring at you cross-eyed. Alright, that's enough practice. Now let's try looking at the prince. Start by staring at one prince and slowly crossing your eyes. We should see two overlapping images like this. Oh, they're doing it for me. We Hold on, sorry. Good screen to pause through. <laughs> you try that. Yeah, everyone try looking at this stereoscopically. Sorry, I had to help my uh, my dad with something. So now I'm back. Uh, you try. Wait, do I look cross at it? No, that's only one image. I'm just going to have to give it a try, I suppose. Oh, I was supposed to do. Oh, I didn't try crossing my eyes. Whoops. Did the prince split into two images for you? Now the next step. Is to put the pair of prints side by side like this and then try crossing your eyes again. Wait, I have to do it on a big one. Oh, but they're moving it for me! Ah. Uh. Oh, whoops, there was dialogue. Until... They form a new single image in the center. Oh, yes! Mr. Naruto, it works! I can see in the middle now! It looks so real! Oh, I can look at it all day! I wouldn't advise that. Your eyes might start to hurt. Your turn, Rina! But are they doing it for me? They're not, like, leaving the images there. Pretend you're looking through, two, uh, through the two pictures and slowly cross your eyes. Keep adjusting the position of your eyes until the two images overlap exactly in the middle. Whoa, whoa, now I see three images though, what, what? Oh wait, they're slowly coming together. Whoa, oh I blinked, it's gone. <laughs> like this, is it? Let me try it again though. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go! I blinked again. <laughs> Frack, I can't do it. I can't do it for too long. But I see it happening, it's crazy, science. Merge. There! You managed it! So now you know how stereoscopic images work. Well, I don't know who discovered it, but it really is quite extraordinary. So what do you think of these stereoscopic prints then, Runo? They're certainly amazing, but it isn't easy to get the knack of viewing them properly. No, some people find it easier than others. But that's why contraptions like this exist, for people who find it tricky. Oh, I recognize that. We saw one over there yesterday, didn't we? I just examined one on the- mm, whatever. If I remember correctly, you press this little knob here. Then set the pair of photographs in the stand at the back and... It's still amazing, even though I know r roughly how it works now. Well, London seems to agree with you. Stereoscopes are very popular at the moment. You can find one of those 
numerous building contraptions in lots of households in the capital currently. But if these little machines are so affordable, surely there's no need to go around staring cross-eyed at pictures like you ha hate them. But it's much more satisfying to be able to see the effect with your own eyes. Well, I think so in any case. Stereoscopic pictures. I had never even heard of them until yesterday. We've certainly learned a lot about them, but I wonder if it's knowledge that I'll ever actually need. We will need it, otherwise why would we talk about this so much? What are depicting a sweet little white cat? I feel as if I have another print just like this one. So what evidence do I have then? Um, I got this... Pontiff Broken Box White Cat Photograph 2. But if I look at the back... Whoa! What's this? Mr. Naruhodo, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's something rather troubling here. I have noticed. The red smear, you mean? Yes, it looks like blood, doesn't it? I wondered if Sister Thusan had picked up on that. Well, in that case... Yes, we need Iris. We should show this to her before we forget. Okay, so... Bloody finger mark. It looked like a... Tiny shoe print. Okay, so... This for the coat. Um, blood samples portfolio. Oh, okay, so this will have just all of our blood samples together. Genus representation papers. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so then let's just present this to Iris. No, present it. Let me finger it now! <laughs> no, Kirby! Oh, that looks like blood! I would say it's from a gloved finger. Almost certainly a glove made of leather. Well, don't worry, Rita. You can leave the rest of me. What color is it? <gasps> Ooh, it's a different person's blood! Look at that! Yes, that's a color we haven't seen before, isn't it? We simply must add it to the portfolio of blood samples. It could be an important clue. Howdy do! Hey Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! Oh yeah, I hope you guys all had good weekends. What did I do? I don't remember what I did. <laughs> I'm getting old! Although, it would be nice to find out whose blood these different colors correspond to at some point. Well, this particular stain of blood. Oh, you've had an idea, haven't you? Do you know whose blood this is? That's not... Um, no. Maybe? Is it Edgar Benedict? No, I don't... I don't... I don't know! I don't know for sure. How could I? We don't have a known sample of the same color. Without that, it's impossible to know. Oh, how very vexing. I wonder... What? Well, it's true that the color doesn't help us. But what about considering how the mark came to be there in the first place? You might have an idea about that, mightn't you, you know? Not if you keep staring at me like that, no. Let's try that again, shall we? Okay, so I got it wrong, so I am supposed to know who... Well, this particular state of blood. Oh, you found out I did, haven't you? Do you know it's best? To... Maybe? I organized the files on my PC and played Portal 2. Nice! Oh man, I tried playing Portal. <laughs> Guess who got sick instantly in the first stage? I wanted to throw up so bad. Uh, but Portal looks really fun because it's like a 3D puzzle game and I love puzzles so I really wanted to play it but the the motion sickness I was gonna hurl so bad. Even trying to watch other people play it I'm just like oh, I wish I didn't have simulation sickness it freaking sucks. Yes I have an idea whose blood it is. Not from the color turn but with a little deduction. That's right, I think it's clear. Iris, you know as well? You first, Rene. Who do you think it belongs to? 
nutty toast. I think it's... Uh, let's see. I think it belongs to... Mason, right? Because McGilded would have had gloved hands. And he kills Mason. Need a game motion sickness pill? We really do. Or like some kind of like, um, cure to balance out the liquid in your ears so that you don't get motion sickness at all. Dice fired Mason. You didn't sound very sure of yourself the way you trailed off there. Well, it was two months ago now, that case. And of course I've never met the victim, so I'm struggling to remember his name. He was definitely thrice fired, though. The victim? Of the Omnibus case? Yes, his name was indeed Mr. Thrice Fired Mason. But that would mean that this blood stain was less than the ticket two months ago. Yes, I think it was. So am I right or am I wrong? Gina brought this ticket here to Windbanks yesterday. I'm suggesting that the blood stain was already on it at that time. So it's a smear of blood from the time that Mr. Mason was killed two months ago. Something else coming back to me now. Something else is coming back to me now. Mr. McGilded was wearing leather gloves that night. Now I ask you, what could hard show when it wants to have a blood burn from my stomach? I wasn't about to start worrying about the gloves and I was on. I reached out to get my hand. It certainly does look like a leather gloved thumbprint, this mark. But we know that Mr. McGilded had no injuries at the time anywhere on his body. From which we can conclude that any blood on the glove belonged to the victim, Mr. Mason. Mr. Nettlehorn, you sound just like Mr. Sholmes. Minus the quirky slip-ups, I hope. Yes, I think you're right, Runo. So I was right. Very well. Let's make note of this. Okay, the blood on it has been identified as Mr. But we don't know for sure, for sure, that it's Mr. Mason. So this is all just still conjecture. But whatever. Whatever. That's how we're gonna roll. Okay, so no, not examine. Whoops, I meant to say move. Now I'm going to finally move into the back storeroom. Or we can't. It is not a thing, so maybe we examine and then we could go in. Let me in! Behind that door is the storeroom, isn't it? That's what Gregsy said. Yes, and that's where I saw that dreadful scene last night. Through the little window in the door. Maybe if there's still like a blood stain left where Mr. Windbank was, we can use the reagent thing. See what color his blood turns. Mr. Windbank face down on the floor with Gina beside him. As a curious legal representative, you have the right to examine the scene, Mr. Nadhoro. We must make a thorough investigation. Yes, of course. And we will. Behind that door, that's that's the real scene of the crime. Don't worry, there are clues in there. I'll find them. Can we move now? We can. Oh, freaking go. You're cool now, but I don't want you in a Gundam suit with me while we're dodging the bullets in Sky Vessi. Oh, that was my dream when I was a kid. I really wanted like technology to further improve so we could all have Gundams. But I'm just like, no, how am I going to have, like, cause there's no like gravity in space. There's no up and down. So you're just gonna be like flying wherever and it's, you're gonna have no sense of like place to ground yourself in. So it's just gonna make me hurl. Oh, so sad. Um, I thought you were gonna say as a kid, my dream was to marry Eric, but I didn't know about Eric when I was a kid. So I couldn't have dreamt about marrying him. <laughs> Poor Iris, she's clamped up completely. Yes, there is blood, hallelujah. 
I was just bound to, to find this difficult. After all, Mr. Woodenbeck's life was taken to this very room only last night. Are you sure? Sure about what? Marrying Eric? <laughs> My eyes are so itchy. Mm. Oh! Wait, Inspector! What is it now, sunshine? You took one look at me and tried to run away. You think a Scotland Yard inspector would run away from some chucked up little defense lawyer to you? Harris is still sad. I just. well. I've never seen her leadership looking like that before, that's the thing. I don't know what to say to her. Rexon kind of grew on me. Yeah, he started to grow on me. And I love seeing his fish and chips because I want to eat it. <laughs> so you weren't running away from me, you were running away from a 10 year old. I'm afraid this is all a little much for young Iris. Some chips of reassurance might go a long way, perhaps, Inspector. Uh. Oh, 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 sorry, I'm yawning. Don't, um, don't trouble yourself unduly, your ladyship. I mean, at least you're not dead, are you? Wow! I don't think that went very well. Why? Look, I'm in the middle of an investigation here, Sunshine, and I told you not to get under my feet. Well, I have to investigate too, so... Suck it up. And we have investigating to do ourselves. Yes. I'd like to hear more of what the socially inept inspector has to say. Oh, Harley. And inquire into how Mr. Sean's operation is going. Okay, before I talk to him, I want to examine the balloon! The police have marked the position of the body with a chalk line. Poor Mr. Winderbeck. He was a nice old man. Well, he was shot just once, through the heart. Most likely, the fellow died instantly. He wouldn't have felt a thing. This must be his blood, then. Yeah, I don't say! Ah! Oh. I don't like to ask at such a rush of time, Iris, but I wonder if perhaps... Don't worry, Susie. I'm ready for action. <gasps> Linda Bank is blue! So now I know the colour of the chemical terms when it reacts with Mr. Winderbank's blood. Personal time, who was your crush back then? Like, like video game crush, anime crush, real person crush? <laughs> also, what time? Like middle school, high school? Hmm, and it doesn't match our analysis of the blood stain we found in the main shop. Wait, th was it? Sholm's also bleeding. Can't we find his blood stain to see what color his blood is? No, but let's add the sample to the others we've already collected anyway. Game? Vincent Valentine. For sure. No question. Anime? Um, like almost every other girl, my first anime crush was Darian from Sailor Moon. After that, it was Troa Barton from Gundam Wing. Uh, after that, it was Team Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. Well, Team Gohan, like older Gohan. So that would be Dragon Ball GT. Um, yeah. But right now, my two biggest crushes, like forever crushes, three crushes, I guess. Um, Akihiko Sanada from Persona 3. Daichi Sawamura from Haikyuu, Vincent Valentine from Final Fantasy VII. But yeah, Vincent Valentine, oh my goodness. Even when he was that little polygon, 
<laughs> on the screen. I was just like, wow, he's good looking. <laughs> Every time we ran into, we got into a battle and then you saw his victory pose, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's a good looking guy. Pervy toes? What? Everyone has crushes, man. Also, um, girl crushes, definitely Tifa, Final Fantasy VII, um, Terra, Final Fantasy VI, uh, Rydia, Final Fantasy IV, um, did I have any girl anime crushes? Sailor Jupiter? I thought she was cool though, she wasn't really a crush. Lux Klein from Gundam Seed. She's definitely a girl crush. Um, definitely Tifa. Wait, but that's that's game, and I said all that. Anime. Did I have any other anime girl crushes? I don't think so. Almost all of my girl crushes are video games. Mm -hmm. That guy from Sailor Moon. When you are a little girl, and all the other cartoons of like things you've seen. Well, actually, no. I've watched like anime since I was like a little kid, but it was like 80s anime, like Candy Candy and Macross, Voltron. So, like, you know, 80s style anime. That's what I watched a lot when I was a kid. And then Sailor Moon came out, and I was like, whoa, everyone looks really pretty, especially Darian. <laughs> and then Gun the Wing came out, and I was like, whoa, Trump Burton. <laughs> But, 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 but right now, it's Daichi Sawamura from Haikyuu! Uh, yeah, let's examine this gun. This! This is a revolver! A real one! And quite, quite possibly the murder weapon used to take Mr. Winterbank's life! Who are your crushes? Now I'm curious. What's the matter, Susie? You and Muno look like you're about to faint! Well, it's just that... I've really seen a gun in the flesh. And I've had issues with guns in the past. But anyway, we saw Mr. Mr. Winterbank with this yesterday, didn't we? Is there like sound coming out the right side of my headphones? It is, but it's very low. Hmm. I shall have to live my own life! Oh wait, it's a flashback, so I, have to, I need to have a funny voice. It must be the same gun. And last night, when I looked through the spy hole in the door to, to the storeroom here. That was the same gun I saw in Gina's hand. Dust it for Prince! <laughs> Mr. Windemang told us that he only ever had a single bullet loaded in his revolver, didn't he? Well, it's empty now. The one and only bullet he had in his gun had been fired. So we can be fairly certain that only a single shot was fired from his revolver. Uh, can we try to look for Iris's manuscripts? Look at all these articles that have been deposited. The room is stuffed full of them. I can't believe how many there are. A bicycle, a gramophone, musical instruments, even some enormous paintings. Look! Pieces of different people's lives quietly gathering dust in here together. There's something very peaceful about the atmosphere in here. Or at least there would be, if not for the chalk outline on the floor and the policeman shuffling around. Give me your fish and chips! Not much I can do about that, sunshine. Okay, so... Uh... Trunk. Can't hear, I'm trying to listen to this game, let's... Don't talk about what can I, me and my crush. Game crushes, though! Anime crushes! It's fine to talk about them. I mean, you you hear me talk about like, oh, Eric is so good looking from Dragon Quest, and like, Ryuji and, um, and, um, Yusuke from Persona 5, like, come on, I, I'm always like, oh, you're so cute. Oh, like, yeah, I think An from Persona 5 is super cute. Makoto's like, the greatest girl. Yeah, it's all just for fun. Out of all the articles in the storeroom, this is the only thing that shows any sign of being ransacked. Ah! What is it, Iris? That's... That's the box 
file that my manuscript was being kept in. Oh! Iris's unpublished story, The Hound of the Baskervilles. I really want a cheeseburger right now, but I had dinner. <laughs> so why am I craving a cheeseburger? Surely that's not what all this. Sorry, Iris. If you ask me, you sold it. But I'm telling you. You must check inside the box at once. Yes. Ah. It was there. I have the story was there. Really? It was? Well, that's good news, isn't it, Iris? Um, yes. I mean, of course I believed Hurley when he said he'd deposited it here, but still... It's a relief to actually see it. Dorothy from Big O, the Major from Ghost of the Shell. Ha oh, I totally forgot about the Major. But yeah, she's amazing. She's so cool. And heck yeah, Dorothy from Big O, she's super cute too. I'm really sad that Big O just ended like that because they either didn't have any money or... Um, yeah, it, it, didn't, it didn't have money or they're just like... Because I think there was a manga that it was based off of, but they just didn't want to like keep making the anime. And I'm like, that sucks because it was such an interesting premise that felt so different. And like, ah oh, man, I really wish there was more of Big O. Really, because that's not a very well hidden frown. Iris's manuscript has been entered into the court record, a long unpublished story that Mr. Sholmes deposited at the prom brokery of the victim, Mr. Windebank. It is entitled The Hound of the Baskervilles. City of Dreams. Yeah, and when they're like, oh, um, I don't re remember what they called the city in the series, but then at, in the end you find out it's like, oh, the forgotten city of Manhattan or like New York or something. And I was like, what? This was New York the whole time? That's crazy. Ooh, Hound of the Baskervilles. The Hound of the Baskervilles. How does Susan Susan know the exact title of this unpublished story? I suppose I'll just have to wait until she's ready to explain to me. I'm so sorry. You should be. Why don't you explain it to me now? This is a frickin' huge manuscript, but then again, they probably only wrote on one side of the... I can't read. Okay. So the manuscript does not have any blood. Oh, no, 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 I didn't mean to. No, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, but like, I thought, I think that was like the coolest part of Big O when they were like, this is, this is New York because you're just like, holy crap. I didn't like, because you weren't aware of like what time period it is or like what happened and where they are, so you're just like, okay, I can set all these, like, giant robots fighting, like, big monsters. And, like, we... There's still so much to find out about Dorothy, and, ugh, big O, so good. Iris? Don't worry, I'm alright. But we must find the true culprit. Yes, absolutely. And that's it? Okay. Then I guess it's time to converse with... Regze. So, Inspector, what do you make of the crime scene here? Pshaw! You've got boys, haven't you? Use them! It's what looks like nothing more, nothing less. Iris, could you lend me a hand? <laughs> so, Gregzy, what do you make of the crime scene here? Oh yes, your ladyship, do allow me to humbly explain. Last night, at shortly after the hour of one o'clock in the morning, Scotland Yard police attended to the scene. The one and only door to the storeroom was found locked from the inside. So it was locked from the inside. The lock appears to be broken now, though. Was that the police officers doing? Quite right, ma'am, quite right. We took the liberty of smashing the door in as humbly as possible. Oh. As you can see, the victim was discovered prostrate on the floor, um, thus wise. 
And next to the aforementioned body, we discovered the vile gutter child. Are you talking about Ginny? She's my friend, you know, Inspector. Mr. Strahd, the hapless girl, was curled up on the floor, dead to the world. She's still alive, you know. Yes, when I saw her, she appeared to be unconscious. And I'm afraid to say, she had the gun that was used in her hands. No. Presumably, it's the gun that's still down there on the floor now. In her pocket, we found the key to the door as well. What? The key to the storeroom? And you say the storeroom had been locked from the inside, Inspector? Correct. All of which leaves her ladyship's front. In something of a sticky situation, I'm afraid. Oh yeah, keep much of those chips. Obviously, my personal opinion is that it's all some sort of misunderstanding. Of course it is, Inspector. Of course it is. I loved it when she called him and allows for throwing her into danger so she would play piano to wake Roger up. It was like payback. Yes! I totally forgot she learned how to play piano and he's just like, oh my gosh, what is that racket that she's making? And she's just like, well, I'm gonna learn. <sighs> Rexy, do you know anything about the Hurley? Is the operation finished? Is Hurley alright? Is he? Um, well, um, the thing is, um... Don't miss your words, Inspector, please! You, you don't mean to say that Mr. Sholmes is... Is... No, 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 the operation's done and dusted. It's just that, well... Out with it! Yes, Mom! They use something called the general anesthetic. It's the latest thing, renders the whole body insensitive. The whole body... anesthetized? Is that even possible? Yes, science. It means the operation can be completed while the patient is fast asleep. Goodness, in the Empire of Japan, we can just manage to provide laughing gas for a tooth extraction. The trouble is, the latest thing isn't always the greatest thing, if you follow my meaning. We couldn't get the medication to work out at first, so it took hours, of him to, uh, hours for him to load off, or so I hear. And now that the op's finished, they, they can't get him to wake up, apparently. They used too much gas! Oh no! I mean, an, uh, anesthesia. Oh my! No one knows if it's the anesthetic still in the system, or if the bloke's just plain exhausted. But anyway, all they can do is stand back and watch until he comes round again. Hurley. What if we go to the hospital, just get a dab of his blood, and then use the reagent on it just to see what color his blur turns into? The moment he opens his eyes, your ladyship, I swear she'll get word to you. What a surprise. Even in matters of life and death, Mr. Sholmes has things to do has to do things his way. My favorite episode was when he took her to the android who played piano so she could learn. I don't remember all the um, episodes clearly, but yeah, like when she was playing on the grand piano, I was just like, that's so pretty, it's so awesome. Uh Okay, I don't think there's a drop of Sholmes' blood here, so do I talk to you more? No. Then I... Actually, I want to check the blood portfolio. Thrice Fat Mason is purple, and Pop Winnebank is blue. And we don't know who green is. Oh, uh, I want to look at people to see if it got updated. I go to still question mark. Okay. Let's try moving. I should learn that piece. Man, now I need to like look up Big O again. Uh... Nope, wrong. Um, where am I supposed to go? Prison? It's very pretty. Prison was right. Okay, before I forget, I'm just gonna open up a new YouTube window and type in a big O piano. <laughs> your terms. Big O piano. Big O Dorothy piano. <laughs> Dorothy wakes up, Roger. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, I'll have to watch that after stream. 
Whoa, what happened to my camera? What the heck? Wow, wow, webcam, what is happening? I just clicked off, what the heck? Um, sorry about this, I didn't think this would happen. Um, okay, and then tilt, okay. Uh, it's a little zoomed in, too much zoomed in. Uh, there we go, okay. I just lost all these. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know why my webcam freaked out on OBS. <laughs> the ending is the best. Don't drink anything. We saw your room. Yeah, you, you saw my room quickly. Okay, nothing embarrassing. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm safe. But that was weird. Anyways, on with the game. Gina doesn't appear to be here. I believe she must be in questioning at the moment. Ghosty toast. I'm a ghost. Oh, but wait a minute. What is it, Iris? Well, if you examine the scene here carefully, there's another possibility, isn't there? Ginny could have slipped the key from the jailer when he wasn't looking and escaped. Oh my! Why would she do something like that? It would only make her situation worse. Calm down, Runa. I was only joking, of course. Oh. Ugh, you had me worried there. I thought it was a great deduction. Yes, it must be your way with words, Iris. You're so wonderfully persuasive. Perhaps you don't fully understand the way your words carry. Oh dear, I'm sorry. I suppose a light-hearted great detective is a contradiction in terms. Well, in the same situation, I'm sure Mr. Scholes would have just thrown his head back and guffawed. I'm not entirely sure that's helpful, Mr. Nutto. I want cereal. <sighs> Ooh, a little bit of cereal sounds nice. Just like the tiny bit, just for the cold milk and the little sugary cereal crunch. <gasps> I might get some after stream. Ooh, that sounds like a good snack. Well, anyway, it looks like we won't be able to talk to Gina for a while. We should try to make progress with our investigation in the meantime. Yes, come along then, Reno. Come on, Sissy. So are we not examining? Nope, we can only move. To where? I mean, that's... I, what? Hospital? Nope. Shoulders are sweet. Nope. Uh, legal consultancy? Nope. Back to Winter Bank? Uh, nope. Storeroom? But I've examined everything in the storeroom. Yeah. Do I have to converse with you more? No. I don't think I have to present anything to you. Baker Street? No? Wait. Oh, that's just hanging there. Um... Chief Justice's office? No, seriously, where the F am I supposed to go? Maybe I am supposed to present something to, um... To Gregson. Try it? Inspector Gregson, could you give me your opinion about this, do you think? We don't intend to share, sunshine. Not with the general public. Ugh. In that case, Gregson, how about some herbal tea? Glug, 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 glug. Ah, oh, lovely. Ah, very much. That really hurts the spot, your ladyship. You don't mind sharing that then. We have two box or res puff because of a misunderstanding, huh? Oh, two box of Reese's puff. Oh man, Reese's puff is one of my favorite cereals. 
I think I, I talked about it last time, right? Like, I love that when you put the Reese's Puffs in, in the milk, like, eventually it turns like sugary and chocolatey. So then when you finish drinking the milk at the end after you're done eating all your cereal, it's, it's like chalky milk. It's so good. <laughs> um, where am I supposed to go? What else am I supposed to do? I think I examined everything here. The blood, the gun, the knickknacks, the box. So where am I going? Choco toast. I love chocolate. Dark chocolate is the best. Am I supposed to examine anything else in here? No, I think I've done all that. Wait, this shelf? These shelves are where the pawnbroker puts articles that have been forfeited on display for customers to buy. Yes, it's a really strange miscellany, isn't it? I mean, who would buy this horse statue, for example? Well, sometimes you can find real treasures among all the junk, you know? Are you alright, Runo? Oh, it's just... Well, it looks like a collection of useless junk as a whole, but when you pick out individual things... You can't help witching you own them. Even that horse statue. That's exactly how Pawnbroker works. They're very clever. Okay, so that was useless. Sorry, English is my first language, but I suck at it. Nah, it's all good. Sometimes you, like, have trouble typing. I understand. Um... His cameras are not up and running. So they, like, and then we took a picture. Or that's gonna be one of the pieces of evidence that they show in the trial. Like, oh, hey, they happened to take a picture because he has security here, and look who it is, and it's gonna be Gina, and we're gonna be like, no, it wasn't her. Just because you have her photo doesn't mean she killed him. Seriously, where am I supposed to go? You are right, bro. Um, I got the things, I got the things. Maybe if I present her manuscript to her? Oh, my manuscript. Mr. Shulm said he deposited the Edwin Banks that he had. That's so strange. What is it about this particular story? I worked so hard on it. Why would Hurley say I can't publish it? I'm afraid I have no idea. All you can do is wait until he's ready to tell you, I suppose. Oh, maybe. That's because Hurley isn't in it enough. Maybe I didn't give him enough good lines. Yes, maybe. I wish I could say that definitely isn't the reason, but I can't. Okay, so what the F? What the F? Do I present the blood to you? The way you can identify differences in people's blood like this is amazing. You really are a genius, Iris. I know. I am. If Hurley and I put our minds to it, we can really shake up Britain's chemists and alchemists. And you could shake up Japan's lawyers and judges, couldn't you, Mr. Naruhodo? Oh, for sure. Even if I didn't intend to. Okay... Am I- I feel like I'm missing one thing I'm supposed to examine. Kirby, can you help me? What am I supposed to do? I feel like I've examined everything here. It's presenting something to Greg- so it is presenting something to him. Oh, oh, flippin'. Oh my gosh, is it the- Am I supposed to present the manuscript to him? I'm gonna try it. And it gets stuck on it, but I was like, I can see someone getting stuck here really easily. Uh, is that what I think it is? Y your ladyship's latest. Yes, my latest story. It's called The Hound of the Baskervilles. Uh, a most fascinating title, your ladyship. Fascinating. And, um, I don't suppose. Is that what I think it is? <laughs> Would there be any mention of my humble self in the tale this time? Hmm, good question.
question? I can't really remember. <laughs> I see, I see. Well, why would you, Ladyship? I'll just await the pub its publication with eager anticipation. You needn't worry, Spectre. I'm sure if you do appear, you won't be looking at anything particularly remarkable. You looking to be arrested, Sunshine? I didn't mean it like that. And even if I did, you wouldn't have bitten her ladyship's head off, would you? Okay, so it's not that. Um, is it this? <laughs> Inspector Gregson, could you give me your opinion about this, do you think? Nope, it's wrong. It's delicious! <laughs> Um. Uh, is it this? Inspector Gregson. Nope, nope, nope. It's wrong. Wrong. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was wrong. Stop it! Get me out of here. Okay. Next, I'm gonna try the blood. Because there's nothing else that could possibly be of interest to him. Inspector Gregson! Nope! Nope! Okay, so... Nope. It's nothing to be presented to him. Did another dialogue option pop up and I'm just stupid and missed it? On something I presented everything, everything except for this palm broker's ticket box. Um, Inspector, what do you make of this? Oh, what have we here then? Oh, wait, this is totally new dialogue. I'm a to ticket for an article deposited here, is it? Looks like someone ran out of office stationery and wrote the ticket on whatever paper was to hand. Yes, this is the ticket for McGill's overcoat, the one that the little diver turned up with yesterday. Oh, actually, no, it's not. Really? Think you know better than me, do you? No, I, I didn't mean to, um... Who knows right, Gregsy? It isn't the same ticket. Of course it isn't. Oh, of course it isn't. I never doubted you, your ladyship. So what's all this about, then? If I may be so bold as to ask. This is a second ticket. A second one? It seems that Mr. McGilden in fact had another article in storage here at Windebanks. Is that right? I think we need to discuss this further with the inspector, Mr. Nadahodo. Oh, good. Because he's ever so easy to talk to. Cool. It was the last thing I ever had to present to him that I got stuck on. Fan-freaking-tastic. This ticket was in one of the pockets of Mr. McGilden's overcoat. Uh, you you need to tell me. Happens to everyone for real. I'm usually like really good about examining everything, but like presenting evidence, I don't do that. Yes, there's more than just the music box disc, it seems. Hmm. Should have insisted on the lads taking it back to the yard and examining it properly. Well, according to the details on this ticket. Mr. McGilda deposited another article here with Mr. Windebank. Yes, I can see it written here. A small box, was it? Do you have any idea where it is, Gregsy? Any idea at all? It's another article belonging to Mr. McGilda. It could be an important clue. Well, um, yes, so um, I suppose it could be. They don't know where the box is. That's the thing they're not taking. Please stop looking at me with those big turquoise eyes, all full of hope and expectation. It's too much pressure. I'll lose me marbles, I will. I'll go barking. Uh, food, I'm so hungry. This is no time for dog impressions, Inspector. That's enough sauce from you, sunshine. There's one thing that springs to mind. According to this ticket, the redemption deadline's already passed, hasn't it? Oh yes, of course. Articles are only held for two months. 
So the small box will no longer be in here then. That's right, it's been forfeited. Which means it could be on the shelves in the front of the shop. Where the forfeited items are oh whoops, I so skipped by that too far, but basically the shelves. Yes, the shelves in the front. We must search them at once. You're wasting your time. Oh? There are dozens of little boxes out there. Hundreds even. Can't possibly know which one might have been the Mr. McGilded's. That information's not written in the ledger. Uh Well, I think we should at least have a look, just in case. Of course, your ladyship. Of course. Very sensible of you, I'm sure. This is getting old. Whoa! Dong, dong, dong. Ah! I nearly jumped out of my skin there. How come Mr. Wunderbeck set such a wicked trap? I doubt he set it out to scare anyone. Is that really the time? I think perhaps we should pay Gina another visit soon. Oh? Her trial is tomorrow. You must establish whether or not you will be defending her. I think we should ask her one more time. She may have changed her mind. But we need to look for the box first! Someone's gonna come in and take it away while we're not here! Did you remember, Runa? You told her she could rip up the representation papers if she didn't want you to be her lawyer. Really? Did I say that? <laughs> yes! You did! The deadline for submitting the paperwork is fast approaching. In that case, we had better hurry back to the prison and talk to Gina again. No, we're gonna miss the box! We're gonna miss the box! The box is... Ugh. They're probably not gonna let me examine the shelf again. Or will they? Yes, this is where all the items that have been forfeited by their original owners are offered for sale. That's right. They've all got little price cut labels on them, but there are so many. I wonder if the small box this ticket was for is still on the shelf somewhere. The box that McGilda deposited here just over two months ago. Even if it were, finding it promised to be very troublesome indeed. There's so many boxes, it could be any one of them. Mr. Shaw said that a pawnbroker's was the safest place to store anything, more secure than a bank's vaults. So perhaps this is a small box of Mr. McGilded's contains something of uh, very great value. Well, if that's the case, you probably have kept it locked. So then we need to find every box of the lock and break them all open. Hiya! That sort of misconduct will get you arrested. I won't let that happen. Ah, this takes me back. It's been some time since Susato-san last threw me. So, box searching is nil, so we're just gonna have to move to the prison. She talked to Gina. Bum, bada, bum, bum, bum. 16th April, 5.01pm, blah 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 blah. Ah, Gina, good, you're back. Ah! The police must have finished questioning her then. Oh, how was it, Ginny? Was it awful? Eh, uh, oh, uh, did it bother me? Thank you for the papers you signed before. It meant we were able to investigate at Windebanks. Oh, right. Don't you want to know how we got on? We've been ever so busy. What's the point in asking? Won't change what everyone's saying, that I did it. That's not... Gino, we came to ask for your final decision. Eh? What decision? About tomorrow's trial. Will you let me defend you, or not? I must submit the paperwork now if you'd like Mr. Nadahoto to represent you. Right, I see. She's really lost her fight all of a sudden. But I know what that feels like. The worry is just so hard to bear. 
And now we converse. What we've uncovered. Oh, all right then. Blimey, give it a rest of the eyes, Iris. So come on then, Filson. Who done it? Unfortunately, we don't know that yet. You don't say. We don't know yet, Gina. Don't you love Cinderella's? No, I don't. I don't like them at all. And it's just like, please be upfront about your feelings, please. Or at least be nice about it. Like, come on. When Mr. Narahodo and all of us know that you are innocent of this crime. And while we haven't yet managed to work out who the real culprit is, there are a number of interesting facts that we have managed to establish. Hell yeah? Like what? Well, for example, the reason for you being in there, uh, being there in the first place. I think I know why. I think I know now why you broke into Windebanks that night. It looks like I'm going to have to take some evidence that clearly reveals the reason, and thrust it into Gina's face, where I can present it to her calmly. I suppose it's either gonna be the ticket with the um take it with the box because she's like, I have to find it. Or it's gonna be Iris's manuscript to be like, oh, did Sholmes really sell it or not? But representation to court! We already have the representation papers and the other documents we need. All we need to- all we have to do is hand them to the court clerk. That is, if you'll allow me to represent you in court tomorrow. Nah. Don't bother. Ginny! Rip them up and chuck them, would ya? Them representation papers or whatever they're called. This cell ain't fancy enough to have a bin. So what will you do in court tomorrow? I'll be fine, me own. I don't think you will be. Look, it don't matter. What's gonna happen is gonna happen. This is one summer pickpocket. Okay, I think before I talk to her about representation purpose, I have to uh, present the evidence. Presenting! I'm just gonna do the manuscript first. We found this in Mr. Winbank's storeroom. The manuscript of Iris's latest story. Ah! Oh, right. Well, that's good news. Well, that's good then. Curiously, the storeroom at Winbank's showed no sign of being ransacked for items of value or the like. With one exception. The box file that housed this manuscript. It was you, wasn't it, Gina, who broke open the box containing this manuscript last night? Eh? You were determined to find out whether or not the Hound of the Baskervilles was really there. That's what the real reason you broke into the storm last night, isn't it? Ah! Why don't you tell us what happens, please? Iris's manuscript. Alright, yeah. This Baskerville story. It's the latest Storm's adventure, right? But it ain't been printed yet. So I figured it's gotta be worth a fair few pieces of silver, right? Oh, yes. At least 5,000 5, pounds. What? So, you intended to sell Iris's manuscript, did you? Yeah. Ginny, how could you? What? Wait, no, hang on. Of course I won't go and sell it. All I wanted to do was find out if the mantle script or whatever you call it was really there or not. That's the only reason I was in the place. For Iris' sake, isn't that right? Ah! We knew why you'd done it from the start, Gina. Of course we did. But... I knew you wouldn't do anything mean like that, Ginny. I just knew it. Well, um, um... When I saw the manuscript in the storeroom, it reminded me of what you'd said the night before. Gosh, why more flashbacks? Oh, still, sure, that wasn't that belief in my breakfast last night of them. You just ain't realized it yet. I'm telling you, that mantle script ain't out what it makes. You too see if you ever look. If I'm honest, I want 
find it a fairly stunning way to truth sometimes. I mean that I sometimes wonder if you might have hidden my mental switch from him. Somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Yeah, good job, Gina. Make a ten-year-old feel like crap about her caretaker. Oh, Jenny, that was so sweet of you. And you're okay with that? Like, okay, fine. All right, all right. I'll tell you why I did it. Stop looking at me like that, Iris. Reason for breaking in. It wasn't because of Iris. That's not why I did it. I just... I wanted to know the truth, that's all. You wanted to know if Mr. Charles was being honest, if he'd really deposited the manuscript at Windebanks. It's like I told you the night before. I never had a father. But Iris' lot ain't like mine. She got her dad, only she can't see him. Because he's dead. And I reckon that's gotta be harder. That's why she writes her stories. They're about her dad, really. That's what it sounded like to me, anyway. Last night, when I was listening to what you were saying. Stories about Daddy? You mean, they're not the adventures of a great detective? So much as the adventures of a great detective and his trusty partner. Well, that's how I see it, yeah. You're so thoughtful and so kind, Jenny. Yes, and we never thought any differently, did we? Look! Give it a rest, will ya? I ate all this chummy nonsense. Do you hear? I ate it. You don't trust no one, right? That's our work. Of course, if you don't trust no one, no one can let you down. So leave me alone. Go on, scalper. Then why did you go to Iris' house for dinner? I don't understand. Zundere suck! <laughs> I hadn't noticed until now, but it's unmistakable. Right there on both sleeves of that overcoat. BLOOD! Are some very suspicious red stains. What? Why look at me like that? I think it might be worth presenting some of our other findings in that area to Gina now. Uh, we're going to present the blood portfolio. Those stains on the sleeves of your new coat, Gina. They're blood, aren't they? Not that I know whose blood yet. What? But blood, Mr. Nanhoro. You don't appear to have any obvious wounds yourself, though. So could it be blood that spattered from Mr. Windebank when he was shot last night? Let's not beat around the bush here. This trusty friend of mine will get results much faster than anything else. Take it easy, Iris. Don't move, Jenny. I'm going to shoot. What color is the blood? <gasps> it's purple. It's Mason's blood. Oh. Oh my. What the? Forget the sleeves. The whole coat is covered in blood. Of course. The black color of the fabric was masking the stains. That's why we haven't seen them until now. And the blood reacted with the chemical to turn a purple color. Which matches one of the samples we've already collected perfectly. Yes, now let's see who had the purple blood. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! It was the brickmaker, Mr. Mason, the victim of the murder case two months ago. I knew it. What? Well, what are you all on about? The victim? What you mean? It's a rather uncomfortable situation, Mr. Naruto, but I think this makes things quite clear. It means the omnibus case is finally solved. The truth about who really murdered the brickmaker, Mr. Mason, is revealed. Oi, would someone explain what's going on? Stop telling out the story! Okay, so now I just talk to you? 
Truth of the Omnibus case. We can see now that the victim's blood is all over Mr. McGillard's overcoat. But in the trial two months ago, the defendant said in his testimony... But if you look at this overcoat now, it's clear. These dates couldn't have arisen from McGilda trying to pull the victim to his feet. No, no, if that's what would have happened, the blood wouldn't have splashed all over the front of the coats. The only explanation for this pattern of blood is that it splattered over McGilda's coat when he stabbed the victim in his stomach. But if you're stabbing a victim, like, because the knife is in there, the blood isn't gonna come splurting out until you, unless you pull out the knife and stick it back in him. So, how would he have- whatever, it's a game. I've tried to run for the truth for long enough. But there's no escaping it now. The true culprit in that case, Mr. Mason's killer, Magnus McGilded. Mr. Naruhodo. That horrible case is solved at last. And I... I helped the man walk free from that trial. Well, he burned to death, so he got his just desserts. I used all that twisted testimony and all that sham evidence to prove his innocence. How could I have let that happen? Because Gina helped with the lie! Rina, did you believe him, though? Did you believe Mr. McGilded was innocent? I believed... Or rather, I think I was trying to believe. I wanted to. Because believing in those you represent in court is a defense lawyer's greatest weapon. A weapon? Oh, oh, that's Iris. A weapon. A lawyer's weapon. Before we came to the Great Britain, a great friend of mine taught me a valuable lesson. You mean Kazuma-sama? <gasps> Kazuma! Oh, look at him, beautiful boy. Yeah, Kazuma! And his theme song, oh. It's so good. This is my alarm clock on my cell phone when I need to wake up. It's very nice. Oh, so good. I can't give him a silly voice because it's Kazuma. Listen, Junosuke. We lawyers are only human. We can't know for sure what, the, what is the truth and what is a lie. Which is why we must resort to our primary weapon. He turns to look at me. Ah! <laughs> An unwavering belief in our clients. That's all we really have. Unwavering belief? Only when we truly believe what our clients tell us can we fight with everything we have for their cause. In any battle, there can be no victory without faith. So I believe you, unwaveringly. <laughs> What's funny, Gina? Cool. Sounds like in this Empire of Japan you come from. Everyone must be soft. Look at the mess it got you into, believing in that bulk trotter. Yes, I inadvertently helped a murderer walk free. Well, at least you've learned a lesson now, eh? Believing in people's never worth it. Someone always stabs you in the back of the end. As soon as you let down your guard, you've had it. Take a leaf out of my book. Believe no one. Get it by no one. Gina, may I ask you something? What? I'd just like to make absolutely sure. What would you like us to do with these representation papers for tomorrow's trial? How many times I have to say it? Rip them up and chuck them away. Are you really sure that's what you want? 
I bet that's what he wants and all now. Mr. Armor Believer Lawyer over there. Don't forget it was me in that trial two months ago. I let everyone up the garden path, didn't I? You tell me that you can believe in me after that. Not likely. Well, Miss Nadahodo? The lawyer's primary weapon is an unwavering belief in his clients. Well, clearly since there's no blue blood splatter on anywhere on her, like, we know she's innocent, so we can trust her. Ultimately, it comes down to whether or not I feel I can trust Gina after everything that's happened. Me, personally, I wouldn't be able to, but this is a game. We need to continue, so I trust her. Gina, let me say it again. Please allow me to represent you in tomorrow's trial. It, are you a bait? Not at all. You've not once admitted to committing the crime, have you? What's more, I believe that you're telling me the truth. Seriously, um, Mr. Naru Odo. Don't you hear all what I said before? I'm a born liar. Fitch just trip off my tongue. And I'm a diver, don't forget. I pulled the wall over your eyes two months ago and got you all into all sorts of trouble. Why would you ever trust me now? I just don't get it. Gina. I do understand why you choose not to put your trust in others. Life of a tsundere. Ooh. Not all tsunderes can be Mizuki though. <laughs> Wait, Mizuki, Mizuki. Uh, AI? Wait, her name was Mizuki? Was it? It was Mizuki, not Miyuki. Wow, wow. I thought her name was Miyuki. I'm terrible. It's Mizuki. Mizuki is cute though. And she's just a kid. Gina is 17. Mizuki is like what? Seven? <laughs> 10? 12? <laughs> but I assure you, there's more to this life than you yet realize. What you mean? The world we live in. It's full of people you would do very well to trust. People who won't ever let you down. People who will never turn around to desert you. Eh? It's true that I'm just a student of law, and I'm certainly lacking courtroom experience. But I can promise you this. Whatever happens, and until my very last breath, I am completely on your side. Oh man, what was the song at the end of Somnium? Something Rainbow Arrow. The one line I clearly remember. Fruit never expires. <laughs> Fruit does expires, it rots. <laughs> What do you expect me to say that? Then it's decided. I will take these papers now and carry out the necessary preparations for tomorrow's trial. It would be a shame to throw them away now after it's been penned with your name so beautifully. Do what you like. You waste a lot are. are. I don't know what you are. I don't get you. Oh, please let this be at the end. My throat is hurting. Gina's taken herself off to the back of her cell. She never admitted it, but I hope she's feeling relieved. That turned out all right in the end, I think. Pet this cat. Petting cat. <laughs> Whoever's hiding there, show yourself at once. Eavesdropping is the height of cowardice. Miss Susato. Somebody is there in the shadows. I can sense it. Somebody who wasn't there before. What? Uh-oh, what are they gonna take? What are they gonna take? Buy me a share, buddy. Oh, okay, said. I suppose you were using one of those mystic Japanese arts, like the art of stealth I heard so much about. We're not ninjas. If anyone's being stealthy, it was you, Inspector. Quincy! Oh dear me, I'm most terribly sorry, your ladyship. I didn't mean to startle you. How long have you been listening on our conversation? Good grief. 
Listen, no, 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 no. I just got word that there were some visitors who were refusing to leave even though it was after hours. I assure you your leadership, I only just arrived. This very minute, not a moment earlier. That's all it is. Nothing not to word, nothing at all. After hours? Is it that late already? So then, I'll humbly excuse myself now, your ladyship. Ta-ta! Toodaloo! Cheerio! All the best, and bye bye and bye. <laughs> That's a lot of farewells, and not one of them appropriate for her ladyship. How much do you trust Gregson? I... I trust him. Quite a bit. I don't think he's shady. <gasps> what if he is shady? Oh my gosh. Uh, oh, but I want to have a chance. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but time is pressing at the minute. I actually don't know. Oh yeah, because you're only on the trial right now. Oh, I see. That's a shame. If I don't get this emergency at the Supreme Court that was sharpish, Lord Strongheart will... will... Emergency? Lord Strongheart? Nothing! Forget I've said anything. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm off. Alright, Gregsy. If you have to go, but let's chat soon. Delighted. Charmed. Can't wait. If you please. My pleasure. That's a lot of pleasantries. And not one of them sounded sincere. Rex is so funny. He says such silly things. It's certainly entertaining to see an inspector of the police fawning to a ten-year-old girl. Why do I have a feeling that there's still someone that we're missing like this? The real presence of the... The real presence in the shadows, it's not Gregson. It's gonna be someone else who was after what McGilded had um, put in the pawn shop. That's my hunch. That's my theory. A game theory. But anyway, I wonder what this emergency is at the Supreme Court. I must attend the court clerk's office now before it closes. Yes, of course. Thank you, Mr. Soto. Kindly escort Iris home now, Mr. Naruhodo. I shall meet you there later. Oh no, something's gonna happen to Susato. And so our investigation came to an end. Susato-san went to the file to file the necessary papers for my defense of Gina the following day. And then it hit me. I could no longer suppress the wretched feeling that had been gnawing away at my insides. Tomorrow... Susato-san would be leaving, leaving Britain and making her way back to Japan. Uh, 11.13 p.m. That's late! Naruhoda-san. It's been a very trying day, hasn't it? I do hope you're not too exhausted. What about you, Susato-san? Today has been even more trying for you, I'm sure. Mr. Scholz was shot before our eyes. Gina was arrested. Hall in the back of the news that her father has fallen ill and that she must return to Japan at once. I hope your father recovers soon. Thank you for your kind words. I wonder why it is that so many thoughts rage in my head like a storm. And yet, I seem unable to find the words to express any of them. I know exactly what you mean. Anyway, I have one final task to complete as your judicial assistant. Once that is done, I shall make preparations for my departure tomorrow. One final task? Oh my gosh, why didn't you just... Why all these talking topics? It's just two months since we arrived in London. When we managed to establish this office, I was finally feeling as though we were stumbling in. I would be lying if I said I felt no regret. Jelly's so impatient. I am! I'm tired. I want to sleep. I want to get some cereal and sleep. I'm so sorry, Susan the Sun. It's just so sudden. I really don't know what to think. I've had no time to gather my thoughts. I know we've only been here a short time, but... In my limited experience at the courtroom, I feel I've learned something. And what would that be? It seems to me there's many facets to people's personalities. 
facets? And like a jewel, the light plays off them in complex patterns, illuminating their actions and their motives. But we see only a small number of the total facets, and what is illuminated is only a part of the whole story. What lies in the shadows? What do those facets we cannot see look like? Perhaps there are some parts we'll never lay eyes on for as long as we live. That's so true! Sometimes I feel as though I'm blind to so much. But I keep hoping that one day it will all become clear. That all the facets will be illuminated and I'll finally understand how everything fits together. Not what it's not- what? You make no sense. I suppose what matters is that we keep our eyes open and keep moving forward, even if the way sometimes seems dark. So what does it have to do with people? It's amazing to think it's just been two months. You've grown so much. Sorry? I've what? Oh no, that was nothing. Unimportant. <laughs> There's signs to people we've never seen. We've gotta keep moving forward. What? <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand. Do you know what time you will leave London in the morning? Yes, I picked up my ticket earlier. I shall be leaving here at 4 a.m. That's only that's in like five hours. I see. Well, I'll escort you to the station. Absolutely not. Sorry? I'm sure you realize why I couldn't possibly let you do that. You have a very important day ahead of you tomorrow. Gina's trial. Yes, I know, but... Every word you utter will have the potential to determine Gina's fate. You must get as much rest as possible. Even though, like me, I'm sure you'll find it hard to sleep. But please, for me, do try. One final task. You've grown so much. That's what she said. Ah! Um, you mentioned one final task a moment ago. What did you mean? Oh my, I nearly forgot. Please, I want you to have this. What is that? Some huge bundle of documents. It's my notes from the case two months ago. The murder that was committed on the omnibus. The McGilded case. It seems to me that this case of Mr. Winnebank's murder, of which Gina is accused, is very much tied up with that omnibus case in ways that are not yet completely apparent. So I take the liberty of consolidating my writings about the case for you. With everything else she has she's had to think about. Susato-san still managed to do this, and all neatly laid out for me in her beautiful handwriting. It was my pleasure. I can only hope that it will bolster your case tomorrow for Gina. Thank you so much, Susato-san. I'll do my best to use it wisely. You really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Well, that's extremely flattering. But I'm sorry to say that I've been a complete failure. Sorry? I didn't quite catch what you said there. Oh, ignore me. I was just mumbling to myself. What is going on with you, Susato? Notes uh, collated by Ms. Susato about the McGilda case that we worked on two months ago. She's just like, oh, nothing. Oh, never mind. Oh, whatever. What's going on in your head, Susato? Well, it's getting rather late. I think you should go to bed now, Naruhoto-san. Hey, Jelly, never mind. <laughs> That's what Susato is doing. It's annoying. I must finish packing up my things in my room. Susato-san, I... I wish you the very best of luck tomorrow. That's what she said. <laughs> Good night. <gasps> oh, she said. Wait, there's there's something I need to say. Hiya! What? What was that? A secret technique of mine. The Susato shut down. Shut down. Please, I implore you. The Susato shut down. <laughs> If we have to voice our goodbyes, I won't 
be able to hold back my tears. You can't really leave before this last case, man. For real? Then is Iris really going to be my assistant then? Or am I gonna be alone? Or will Kazuma's ghost show up? <laughs> She's at the sun. It truly had been a trying day. On our feet for hours, getting Gina to open up to us, and learning the truth about that nemesis of the case. Hey, Monkeys, good morning! Happy to Wednesday for you! Physically and mentally, I was exhausted, and yet the idea of sleep seemed impossible. But I forced myself to close my eyes, and a as a cacophony of scenes of our lives here in London played through my head. Eventually, my fatigue triumphed, and I fell into a deep sleep. Be continued. Oh no, we're going on. Okay. The small hours, St. Sinner's Hospital Ward 3. <gasps> uh oh. Yes, I quite understand. That is a great weight off my mind. <gasps> He's awake. Rest assured, I shall put everything in place exactly as we have discussed. Thank you so much. It has been an honor and a pleasure to be acquainted with you, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, it's probably Susan to talking. Whoops. <laughs> On the contrary, the pleasure has been mine. I bid you farewell and Godspeed. My dear madam. So is he going to be my assistant then? Okay. Do, 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 do. So now we save, and then the next time we start, it'll be trial. So, oh man. It's a good place for me to stop because I am getting really hungry and really sleepy. So, yeah, I'll pick this up on Thursday. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for joining, man. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. See you all next time. My camera zoomed out again. Why? Why is it doing this? Yeah, Carnegie Mellon. Woo! But anyways, Cocoa Puff. No, I have cornflakes, so I'm going to go eat some cornflakes. Also, I need to fix my webcam. Why does it do this? Anyways, have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>